Uh, Keith has been getting plenty of rest since he returned from his vacation. Me too. The guy who has not been sleeping is Andy Olson. He has uh, signed a boatload of players. The head coach of the Spokane Shock joins us. Andy, thanks for being here. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm not as uh, good as uh, Mr. Oso there, but I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you know? I, I told Andy about my vacation right before I went on it. One of the few people actually told where I was going. And uh, he said, I need to change jobs. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you no can't kidding. change jobs. You just got a new two-year contract. You can't be doing that. No, I sure do. I'm very uh, thankful to have it. And uh, hopefully we can do some pretty good things here for the next couple of years. You have signed 11 players back from last year. When we talked to you at the end of last season, you said, if we can keep these guys together, we think we can be pretty good. Are you on your way to keeping that group together with 11 signees in the first, what, eight day, nine days, I guess? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think we're well ahead of the pack as far as um, number of people that we're signing back from our current roster. Uh, and I think the next closest team has got three or four. So we're feeling pretty good about where we're at right now. The most important thing is, is we're getting the guys back that we want. Um, there's still a couple out there that are struggling along and kind of toying with us a little bit that we – Still hope to get in the end, but um, we got a couple more days before the free agency period begins, and we hopefully can close these guys as well and, and kind of complete who we wanted back from this previous year. Andy, you don't have a kicker. You're an idiot. I mean, you can't you can't play without a <laughs> kicker. What are you doing? I'm just, yeah, I'm just kidding. But is there a position? I don't see a wide receiver that you've resigned yet. Other than that, I think that's the only position that you haven't addressed yet. Is that right? Jeffrey Solomon's on there. Oh, it's Solomon yes. on there. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I Jeffrey, missed that. I missed Jeffrey that. Jeffrey Solomon's on there. Um, we're talking to a couple other of the, of the guys. Um, that might be one of the more skimpy positions. We'll kind of see. Just put, we hope to uh, bring a couple of those contracts in by the end of the week. So, um, you know, some guys are faster than others. Of course, Solomon's local here, so it made it pretty easy for him to come in and get his contract. Anyone who's out of town makes the, oh, I don't have the fax machine, or I can't do it this day, I got to work, or blah, blah, blah. So, it takes time for a lot of these guys to get their contracts in, but we're pretty confident in the, the group that we're going to get back. Andy, is there anybody who's who's basically told you um, either, A, I don't want to come back to Spokane, or B, I, I'm done, I'm not playing football? Is there anybody that's just basically said, I won't be back? That we've wanted back? No. No. So far, everyone that we have wanted back has either um, committed to us or is very interested in, in making that step. So um, there hasn't been one guy that we wanted back that has said no, and, and an outright no. We've, we're in talks with still you know, a handful of guys from the last season that we really, really want, you know, some big names, Bo Bell, Adrian Tunnell. Um, those guys are the, are the key ones right now, and we're really trying to get them back. But for the most part, I'd say uh, pretty much 100%, everyone we've wanted back has shown very um, – detailed interest in coming back to us. You mentioned Bell and Tunnell, and I know that uh, these are a couple of guys that, especially Tunnell, the the big, big play receiver, um, who is uh, is one that he's going he's gonna to hear offers from other teams. Oh, absolutely. You know, Adrian Tunnell, in my opinion, is just beginning to scratch the surface of what he can do. You know, he, he's really just beginning to, to show his talent and just starting to learn the game. I mean, he's really only been playing for a year. Um, maybe a couple games in that previous season, but he's. I honestly think with with some training, with some hard work, with trying to stay a little bit healthier, um, he would easily be. I mean, and I mean easily be the best receiver in the AFL. And I have no doubt in my mind that if he wanted to try to play on, he could. Uh, you know, he's he's playing the old card. He says his knees hurt and his shoulders hurt and, <laughs> yeah. and blah blah blah. But you know, he's just you know he's he's taking his time. He's he's working on you know the right decision for his family, and we respect that and. We're going to do everything we can to get him back here, and I have a great relationship with him. Uh, we do anticipate getting him back, so um, we'll see what happens. Uh, the big signing for you guys, bringing Eric Meyer back, a guy that we didn't know if he'd play football again. You guys have signed him back to another year. What went into that decision for you guys? I know when he's healthy, he's one of the better guys in the AFL, and I know that you certainly probably aren't done at that position because you know he hasn't made it through a year yet, but he's pretty special when he's healthy, and what, you know, what goes into that decision for you guys? Oh, man, a lot, a lot. I had numerous sleepless nights over over uh, uh, whether or not to sign Eric back or, or to you know to talk about Kyle or, or all those things that, that went into it. Um, a lot of discussion between coaching staff and myself and Ryan Rigmaiden and just a lot of, a lot of thought got went into it. 
um, you know, Kyle uh, wants to go to free agency, and he wanted to test the market, and so that kind of made it um, pretty easy for me, really, in the end. I didn't want to go into free agency without either one of them, and I felt kind of uncomfortable doing that, and Eric had expressed the interest in wanting to, to play for us again, and, um, you know, he's coaching out at Eastern and learning some good things from the coaching staff out there, and he, I think he's actually kind of learning what it's like to be a coach, and maybe he's giving a little more respect because he's working himself into the dirt, which is good for him, so... You know, he's learning some things out there, and he kind of is he's getting that fire back, I think, that he kind of lost this last season. And I think he's kind of feeling like, you know, kind of a bum, I think, is probably the best way to put it, because <laughs> he hasn't really done anything in the last three years, and he's kinda, he's pretty disappointed with himself. Um, he's feeling like he's got something to prove. He felt like last year he was training not to get hurt. He was playing not to get hurt. You know, and he, and he talked to me about the attitude of instead of having that attitude, it's it's now, you know, can I be the best again? What can I do? How do I do it? Uh, all positive thoughts, and I think that that's a that's a huge turnaround as far as him mentally, and that really uh, you know showed me some insight on you know where his mind's at and where what his goals are, and he really wants to win a championship, and he wants to be the guy to do it. So um, you know, I felt pretty comfortable in signing Eric and, and knowing that um, he'll always be there for us. You talked about Kyle Rowley going to, to test free agency, and I know that you're not going to talk about a lot of free agents that might be available, but is, is Spokane one of the teams that will be pursuing Kyle Rowley? Um, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen yet. I really am not sure. That's that's wide open. All that stuff, all the free agent stuff is going to be wide open. It's going to be day-to-day. I think our our minds will change on players probably every 24 hours. Yeah. And I, really, I really do. Um, it's a very crazy time so far. The signing exclusive period has been very boring for most teams. There really hasn't been a whole lot going on, which is great because that means there's a lot of players available to talk to. And so we're probably going to make, you know, easily probably close to 100 phone calls on on next Monday for the guys that are left and, you know, veterans that can come in and help us out here. So, you know, there's going to be a lot to talk about when the time comes. You know, we'll see where we're at. Where We've got a couple other quarterbacks that we really like um, and we're going to consider. So uh, we'll take it day by day. Andy, do you expect Monday to be busy with a lot of guys signing? Like, you see, it, it seems to be with NFL free agency, guys sign very fast. NBA free agency, they sign very fast. Baseball free agency doesn't seem to be as fast. How fast do you expect it to go once Monday comes and, and guys can sign with any team? Um, I think I think it's going to go quick. I, I think there's going to be quite a few of the veterans that you see around the league that have been in the game for a while, uh, the five- to six-year guys that know the game, like Kyle Rowley, who's going to take their time. They're going to talk to every team. Um, they're going to decide what's best for them. You know, one of the strong points that I feel we have over most teams right now is that, you know, when a guy asks, who have you signed, what are you going to do, what are you building your team around, I'm going to have 11 guys right now at least, hopefully 15 by the end of the week, that I can say this is who I've got, you know, this is the core, this is what I'm trying to build around, this is why, you know, I have that base. A lot of these teams aren't going to have a foundation because they're not really sure who's coming back and who's not. So I think that's going to be an advantage for us, but I do think those days are going to be busy. I think we're going to sign, uh, I hope to sign a couple on at least that first day, and I think the week is going to play out probably a little slower than we hope, but I do think it's going to be, as far as communication, it's going to be very busy. It's just can we convince you know, those five, six-year, three, four-year vets to sign, you know, without speaking to every team, which probably won't happen. So it'll probably take a couple of days. One of my favorite signings was was Terrence Sanders. We'd like to see him, like, retire with the shock, which is good because he's very close to the age of a, a getting Social Security. Oh, uh, but, wow. No. <laughs> wow. no, 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 seriously. Oh, he's going to be at the front door in a minute. Seriously, here. though, seriously. <laughs> this guy this guy had a huge impact last year uh, as, as, as a defensive player and as a special teams player. But it, it, it t- just talk about getting him and what his veteran leadership means when you talked about building a team around a guy. Oh, yeah. Terrence is a, you know, he's definitely one of those leaders for us. He's uh, obviously – a tremendous player. He was an all-arena defensive back this last year and probably should have been the all-arena kick returner if they had that stat. But, um, you know, he's a, he's local, which helps. He's able to do stuff in the community for us. He's able to make phone calls for us when, when free agency starts. He's able to try to, to help recruit some of his old buddies that are, are darn good football players. Um, it's just great to have a security in someone like that and someone that we can kind of build our defense around. And he's one of those guys that we're going to – you know, rely on in the clutch situations. And um, Terrence is just such a great guy, too, in the community that it's just kind of an all-around win for us. 
Andy Olson joining us, head coach of the Spokane Shock, as they have been very busy. They've already signed 11 players uh, to contracts. Uh, some of those have been signed to multi-year deals. Uh, Chris Pino got uh, reportedly a three-year deal. Others have been two-year deals. Andy, has that helped? Is is the new landscape of multi-year contracts helping guys? Is it is it keeping other guys from signing early on, did, waiting for a multi-year deal? How has that changed how you're trying to do business? Um, it's definitely changed. It makes, you know, I think it makes uh, Ryan's job a little more fun just because he can kind of negotiate with some of these guys to figure out what fits them best. Um, it, it makes it difficult because not everyone wants to be commit to Spokane for three years or, or two years, even two years. So far, we've been pretty lucky, and I think every guy but one um, has committed to a three to a two-year contract, just one three-year. But uh, the two years is very important. You know, I signed a two-year contract as the head coach, and so I would like to have um, that be the base. You know, the two-year be the base for, for at least 90% of these guys so that I know that, you know, if we can keep them around and keep them healthy and keep them together, um, you saw how that worked for Arizona from year one to two to three, and that's really kind of our goal is to to keep this group together, keep the core together, and then, you know, sprinkle in some veterans and some rookies that can help us and provide energy. Well, we saw how that happened in the last year of the AF2 and basically had everybody back on the team that came up a little short in the championship game and how dominant that team was in year two that you played on. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's huge. You know, it's a chemistry thing. It's, it's guys want to be better. You know, I don't think anyone was happy with our record last year, especially me. Um, I, I feel like the attitude uh, amongst all these players that we've talked about is, is let's do this the right way. You know, I think uh, most all of them are rookies. So we're very confident that these guys are going to come back much stronger um, adults, much stronger players, much stronger people because they've been through a rough year. We had a rough year on the field. We had a rough year off the field. You know, we just had a lot of stuff going on. But it did make every single one of us stronger. And the fact that we've got 11 guys that want to be here already and, and hopefully another four or five more shows that, you know, we're doing some great things around here and the people want to be here. And it's also helped with, you know, the communication with agents uh, for the other veterans across the league that show, you know, the consistency, the players still want to be here, they want to play here, they want to do good things for this team. And, and I think that we're going to show that here in the near future. Andy, the, the biggest re-signing this year, uh, head coach and uh, emergency wide receiver Andy Olson re-signed for two years. I mean, first of all, congratulations on the new deal, and it's got to be nice to know you got some confidence behind you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, I, don't, I don't think I'll be running wide receiver or anything like that. Emergency but, wide receiver. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it, the good thing is, the good thing is, is the, the CBA is done. We shouldn't have to worry about a, a strike anymore, and I don't have to worry about lacing them up and tearing my hamstring 15 seconds into it. <laughs> yeah, I can see how that conversation is going to go over at your house when you go home and say, honey, hey, I'm going to play this weekend. <laughs> you know, you guys, you know how long it would take for me to get back into that kind of shape? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I, we know. We know how long your body would take. We know how long your mind would yeah, take. Yeah, that's right. Two different numbers right there. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Andy, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Uh, It'll be interesting when uh, Monday rolls around when everybody is a free agent uh, in the Arena Football League. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Yep, thanks for having me.